Hey, how's it going? I'm in a different environment today. I am in my office. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a bit different than my home office. Um, but I'm working a little bit late today and I wanted to make sure that I got you out a video. So here we are. Um, I know the audio is gonna kind of suck. I'm recording uh, from this, uh, this screen and uh, it's definitely not as good as the microphone that I have at home, uh, but it'll do. So today what I wanna do is I wanna kind of continue the question that we brought up yesterday, which is how to nest um, suspense. And I realized that in order to do that, we need to talk a little bit about how to debug certain experiences. Um, so for that, I want to open up the Chrome DevTools. Uh, I am using Chrome. Um, all apps or all browsers have uh, some form of DevTools these days. And it's possible um, that they'll be really similar to this. You might have to hunt around and find um, exactly where they are, but they should be very similar to what we see here. Now, um, the first thing that we need to 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 do um, is kind of make it so that we can see some of our uh, our loading states. So we have more time to see like how the waterfall happens, where the data gets loaded and then an image gets loaded, and how that interacts with our app and what gets shown when after a certain amount of time. Now, in order to do that, with all this caching going on, we need to kind of take control over certain elements. So I've opened up the Chrome DevTools. I did that with, um, what is it, Command Option I. There's other ways to open them. I couldn't tell you how, but that's how I do it. Command Option I is how I open it. Um, and that'll open up into the last pane that you were in. Um, you saw that I was on network. Um, there's other ones that'll open you up into, you know, elements, console, whatever. Tons of stuff in here. Um, we can do a whole course on this. Uh, now, you can limit what types of things you are interested in seeing. So one of the things that I'm interested in right now is seeing the images. Okay, so we can see that as soon as I hit, um, hit, hit that, um, an image came through, right? Um, I think that if we looked at, what is it, um, XHRs, we would also see that the request came through for the, for the data for this component. So uh, we can also see all and see that both of those came through. Uh, if I hit back, um, you'll notice that it didn't refetch the list because that's in cache. Again, if I hit two, I see that. Now it's possible that if I hit one again, uh, I'm not gonna make any more requests because those are already cached, okay? Um, it, it might, depending on, it's, it's questionable, right? But we can see that these things um, are brought in from the disk, so um, from disk. Now, I really don't want that to happen when I'm debugging this experience of seeing what loading states the user will see in a slow connection. So I'm gonna press this button called Disable Cache, and that will disable the cache that the browser provides. Now, React Cache is still gonna be doing its thing, but um, this will disable the cache that the browser provides. So if we tap that, um, you can see that we loaded, no, oops, not from disk, but actually from the network, um, the image and the data. So we'll hit back, hit two, you can see that now that is actually being fetched. Now this will give us the opportunity to see those that, that loading state. Now React Cache cached that one, the ones that we've already seen. Now I think, uh, I'm gonna be experimenting along with you. If I hit refresh on these, it will kill React Cache and um, we'll be able to see the, uh, the, the initial state again pre-cache. Now it's cached by React Cache. Okay, so we've got all that going on. Now, even so, when I click on something that React Cache doesn't have and we make the request, um, and we make that request out, well, it's still pretty fast, actually. So I have a pretty fast network here at work, um, and it's, it's faster than I'd like in order to see um, what it might take to have, like if I had a slow image. So I can go here and turn on throttling. 
Um, I find that in a lot of cases, fast 3G is enough for me to kind of get the user experience, but I can throttle it down even further to slow, uh, slow 3G, and you can add some custom ones as well. So if I hit refresh on this, uh, it's actually gonna take a while to build up everything on this fast 3G connection, but you saw right away that these loading states take a lot longer, which is good. Uh, so this is, um, this is what you need to know about how to get a kind of better <laughs> environment for debugging these without having to change things um, about your app, uh, without having to change things about the kind of test uh, network that you're working on. Um, you can just do that all here and simulate it. So one thing that I had posed yesterday was the idea that you can nest suspense. I'm gonna try and get this out of the way. We don't have a whole lot of screen real estate. Um, and I have, let's see, so this, so we're rendering our Pokemon detail um, and that has a suspense component around it that will render the fallback if it's been more than a second, it looks like. Um, so, yeah. Um, so we're gonna go um, back here and we're gonna go find that Pokemon detail component. And what I wanna do is I want to say if I, and let's change this to slow 3G. Let's see how that, that should really bog us down. Okay, now if I'm just waiting for the image but the data came back, I'd like to put a placeholder right here. That would help the, um, that would help the experience in these really elongated times and instead of just wondering what's happening. So we can do that, we can nest suspense. So this, this be is already rendered inside of suspense, but we can nest it even further. So we can say react suspense. We can wrap this image in React Suspense. Now, this is Suspense inside of Suspense. What that gives us is the opportunity to render a fallback. So um, right now, let's just uh, take the easy way out and say image loading. Uh, ideally, we would put some kind of placeholder image here. Now, uh, if we click on this, we won't see anything right away because we haven't told it that we want the duration for this to be less than the suspense around it. So we can set a max duration just for this image um, and say, you know, in the minimum case, um, say zero. So this will always show um, right away, no matter what. Click that. Okay, see image loading. So it takes a second, but it gives you that fallback. Now that's different from what we just saw, which was it was waiting for both pieces of the puzzle before, um, before rendering the whole view. And that's what we wanted in that fast case where we saw that the user um, in, in, in like less than 250 milliseconds, we don't want them to have to wait and then see everything kind of jerk around the page, right? But in this long case where they're waiting for a significant amount of time for data to load, it can be really nice to see these, these fallbacks as the page loads. Now, this should probably be something a little bit more reasonable, so maybe 250 milliseconds. Um, so let's save that and uh, tap this. You'll see that it'll wait for 250 milliseconds, but the image still hasn't loaded yet. It provides that fallback, and then when the image loads, it loads. Now what we can do is we can take this off. We can put this back to just regular online. And with our fast internet connection, if we reload this, we should see that um, in the ideal case with the fast internet, um, we don't see that fallback. And it just kind of loads, everything loads really quickly and everything falls into place. So now maybe um, it, we are still seeing that a little bit. So maybe we need to set our threshold just a little bit higher to something like 500 milliseconds, like really if it's taking a long time. And that seems to be about our, our spot. Um, I guess just one more time, I'm gonna take it down to slow, hit Weedle. Let me see that fall back again. So. That's it, that's how you can use the dev tools to, um, 
man, it really does not want me to grab this. <laughs> this thing, it keeps wanting me to grab that. Um, that's how you can use the dev tools to really control your environment, um, to see what's loading from the browser cache, what's being fetched, um, disabling the cache, and then also setting up a slow thing so you can see um, an emulation of what those slow networks might feel like. So that's it, that's our lesson for today. Um, tweak around with those browser tools. I think they're gonna be really helpful for you uh, as you continue to develop as a React developer. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully in my house with some better sound.